Please, please, boss. Master said I must watch his car while he make big, big deal. Yeah. But if we get briefcase, boss, important paper, I must still take briefcase before he loses big deal. Please, boss, please, as a brief, Melani, watch the car. I'll be back. Just don't keep me waiting. Oh, okay, no, no, no problem, boss. Oh, two minutes. Then spill it. You know my fucking name. <coughs> yeah, yeah, we got his name. You don't have to hit him. He's got to say it. Proper police procedure. <coughs> say it and spell it. <coughs> Fuck you. <coughs> Leave it, man. He's not a fucking football. He's a political prisoner. <coughs> Straight dumb. So you see that Osbeck back from America? Yeah. <laughs> so it's moon. Yeah. But let me tell you, boom. They're gonna take it this weekend. Nonsense, man. They of play course it. they're gonna take it. That American football wrecked him. American football? Never. This broken house is taking out one car. Get it? The fools are gonna take it. Ah, uh, the house takes finish, but get it. Stay. Case 9087 stroke BMS. The Strerom family. Peter Strerom, general with the Boer army fighting for freedom from British imperialist domination, 1899 to 1902. Five years prisoner of war in St. Helena. Martina Strerom, member of parliament in the first nationalist government in 1948 until his death in 1965 of a heart attack, 1958. Peter Martin Stredom, your father, fought in North Africa against Rommel and the invasion of Italy, Yarrow, chairman of the Afrikaans Bank until his retirement last year in 1987. Also, a hard condition. And so we come to the current generation. Peter Martin Stredom, Jr. So what they call you, Pete? Age 30, race white, unmarried. Born and raised Cape Town, Army 76, 78, in Soweto and Namibia. Rhodes Scholar, Rhodes Scholar Oxford. Right? Credit to this country, eh? 79 to 80. Master's degree Oxford. PhD, University of Cape Town in 1982, Professor of political science. Arrested 26th of June 1988 under the Internal Security Act for conspiracy to commit treason, sabotage, and terrorism. I want this on the record. I have nothing to say to you. I have never been involved in and have no knowledge of any illegal activities. I've committed no crime, and I've been charged with no crime. Furthermore, even if I did have information, I would not divulge it to you, because you, your government, and your policies are utterly abhorrent to me. How many hours in abhorrent? Look it up. I demand prisoner of war status, 
Like your great-grandfather, eh? A freedom fighter. Only he risked his life so his people could be free. You want your people ground in the dirt. Where's my attorney? Probably at his office. I demand you notify him. I won't say another word without proper legal representation. A prisoner demands. You'll have a right to representation when you're charged with an offense. Charged with what? And when? The Security Act provides 180 days for investigation before bringing a charge. You think you can hold me for six months? <laughs> no. I don't think so. So how many days have you been here already, then? Ah, uh, yes, I know it is when you lose all track of time, eh? Well, don't worry, Pete. I'm not going to put you through all that. I'm going to release you from all charges under the Internal Security Act. Sergeant. Peter Martin, straight on. You're under arrest in terms of the Terrorism Act. Sergeant. And the 180 days start now. Has my family been notified? I don't know. It's not my demand. I demand you notify my father. Prisoner demands. Why, you haven't spoken to your father for years. Political differences. The act does not require any notification. All right, Pete, write him a letter. I'll see he gets it. Maybe knock some sense into you, huh? And I demand an examination by my doctor. A prisoner demands. That's right, demands, with no R's. Well, you want to see a doctor for you sick? Sick? I've been beaten and kicked repeatedly. I pest blood. Ah. I stood naked for an entire day and night in a tub of ice water while your pigs gave me electric shocks with cattle prods. I've heard nothing of this. You just heard. Well, there's nothing in the file to indicate... Well, write it in. No, I mean, these are serious allegations. I'll make inquiries. You do that. I want to see my doctor. Well, you've already been examined by two physicians. Fascist well, fully quacks. qualified I by law. I want to see my doctor. State that you suffer from contusions to the abdomen and lower back incurred while falling down a staircase in an attempt to escape from custody of guards who are escorting you to your designated quarters. You even say it with a straight face. The incident is fully documented. The incident is bullshit. Sorry, would you like one? Please. The file also indicates as to your statements that you are not cooperative. Now, this is extremely foolish. And you don't strike me as being a foolish man. Now, I've met your friends, some of whom are extremely foolish. But even they had the sense to be cooperative. Henderson and Rodowski, here are their confessions. Easy enough to forge. They'll repeat it in court. The hell they will. You go and forge that. They'll tell the truth. 137 Roads Drive. Isn't that that road up there on the mountain? A oh, wonderful view you must have, eh? The mountain, the sea. Now there's a Christy Malcolm registered at this address. You live with her, don't you? Christy Malcolm's your woman. So bright, so beautiful. I can't tell you how much she impressed me. If you hurt her. No, no. Now, why would I want to hurt her? <laughs> Dear Marty, don't forget the piss, Marty. Oh, yes, of course, your middle name's Martin. Dear Marty, don't forget the pesto. Nick and Mandy for dinner tomorrow, love see. No kiss and make up this time, Marty. You'll have to admit you're wrong. Is that even possible or am I dreaming? Shame, eh? Lovers quarrel. Dearest, thanks for last night. I'm still tingling. God, you're sick. Yes, she's a very intelligent woman. I'm sure she'll have the sense to cooperate. Don't hold your breath. 
Look, we just want this whole thing to fade away. A year or two, Marty. Then you and Christy can move to England. You hate this country anyway. We won't miss you. Your prison records will even help you there. You'll be heroes at Oxford for your opposition to the racist regime. You're alone in all this, Marty, for no reason. You have a lot to live for. Don't throw it away. He's just a kid. Fuckers. Brother, don't let them get to you. Chicky is something else, man. A bit skinny for me, though. And she fought like crazy, but she's tight as a glove and wild, man. Wild. Fucking pig! It's like blacker kaffer booty. Oh, <laughs> shit. 
Die twee van hulle dit ja, ja. Jezus, is ek het so hoever dit by bananenbrand op my kortine gesit. Jy sal nie glo trek as wok nou ding in my pad. Sê jy, vinnig, vinnig. Is er erg iets besonders? Jy sal nie glo. Kom, Boetie. Hey, Stadon. Why don't you just tell the old man what he wants to know? You don't have to stay in this fucking hole for him, you know? Why haven't I heard from my father? Why well, ask me? I'm not a family counsellor. If you aren't giving me his answer... I broke regulation to send that letter. And I'll break them again, if he answers. If not, it's got nothing to do with me. But you did get a letter from Christy Mel. Oh, Marty, please don't hate me. There's just no point in going on. I tried. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But they know everything. You don't know shit. He was politicized after the army, after what he saw in Soweto. When the unrest began last time, he decided we had to do something. She never wrote that. Don't you recognize her handwriting? I'm still tingling. I trust you won't claim that the injury was a result of torture. So what did you see in Soweto? Oh, come on, man, you can tell me. It can't hurt your case. It might even help it. You'll certainly talk about it at your trial. Did you see police brutality? I was part of a massacre. My section was given orders to shoot people down in the street. Men, women, children. They weren't rioting, they were running away. And we shot them in the back. We made no attempt to arrest them. Didn't tell them to halt, we just target practice. Even the dogs, goats, chickens. The police were in fear of their lives. Fear. Some of them were even laughing. The Soweto riots opened a lot of people's eyes, Martin, not just yours. We won the battle, but the war was hopeless. We are phasing out apartheid, but these things take time, man. Look at the rest of Africa. One man, one vote, one time, and then dictatorship, starvation, tribal slaughter, and you can forget about human rights. So if I really cared about human rights, I should have been a cop. He decided we had to do something. He decided we. Were you so lacking in courage that you had to drag your woman into it? You that is that? About courage. It takes a lot of courage to beat children. Okay, drop the pose, Marty. This could mean a reduction in her sentence. Was she an unwilling co conspirator? There was no conspiracy. And you even say it with a straight face. 
Marty agreed to hide weapons. At a meeting in Guguletu with our Umkanto we Sizwe liaison officer, Marty never told me his name. What did you do to her? Talk sense to her. Marty agreed to hide weapons. What's that if it's not a conspiracy? A lie. Is this a lie? Yeah! AK 47s, handguns, grenades, lots of mines. You didn't find them at my house, and if you did, you planted them. Yeah, I wasn't there when your special branch broke in without a warrant. They had all night to find well, whatever they wanted. You were only for the border. Get your facts straight, man. I was arrested coming back over the border with thousands of others after a concert in Zimbabwe. Bruce Springsteen, Peter Gabriel, Tracy Chapman, sponsored by Amnesty International. Which, if you haven't heard of them, they've heard of you. You're in their computer. And what a coincidence, eh? Minutes after Radovsky's arrest, you suddenly decide to drive a thousand miles to a concert? I it for weeks. You never had tickets! They weren't sold here. Cultural boycott. So why didn't Christy Malcolm go with you? She had a seminar. You never took a suitcase. I was coming back the next day. No, at a hotel. I stayed with friends. Tell me about your friends. Hey. Okay. Then I'll tell you. They were a frontline unit infiltrating weapons and explosives into South Africa and training agents in their use to commit acts of terrorism and sabotage. You went to Zimbabwe to receive such training and the concert was just convenient cover. You went to the stadium, but you never entered. You went instead to a blue Volkswagen van, license number HPS 252, that was waiting in the parking lot and that drove you to 26 Somerset Road. You're too late to protect them, Boyke. We took them out. Your friends are dead meat. We're three million Afrikaners on a continent of nearly a billion. And they all want to annihilate us. We not only survive, we're an economic superpower. There isn't an army in 5,000 miles that can touch us. We're one of only seven countries in the world with nuclear weapons. There isn't a place in Africa we can't buy and sell or bomb and bury. And you think we're stupid? Was it fun playing secret agent? Like being in the movies, eh? Secret codes, clandestine rendezvous, crusty in black lingerie, like Matahari. Did it make you tingle? You're right, Marty. You should have been a cop. You led us straight to them. I wanted this one man, eh? And I got him. Hey! Excellent job. So, where have you put him? Right in here, sir. Go in, no, sir. Please, boss. I'm ready to talk. I have information for you, Master. If you give me my freedom, I will give you the names of ANC leaders. The names of leaders, Master. Do we have a deal? 
Names and addresses, Master. The names? Top names of the leaders of the struggle, the enemies of the state. Do we have a deal, Master? Let's hear the names. Nelson Mandela, address, prison. Oliver Tambo, exile. Steve Biko, a mother's grave. I gave you the names, Master. Now sit me free. But we had a deal, Master. Shall I take care of that cat, sir? No, 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 nothing. Let the baboon have his fun. This is the one you want to deal with. I've been waiting for you, Bumbo. <coughs> How's it? Couldn't be better. And you? Terrific. We need club med. What's your name? Marty Stratham. Johnny Bumbo, remember it. I won't leave this place alive. I want someone to remember me. I won't forget. Oh, what the hell? I'm not a baby. I knew what I was doing. Oh, I'm going to miss my wife. She... She was so sweet. Living underground was cool, man. My wife knew that I had to keep on moving, sleep at different places every night. I had ladies in Soweto, Sibokeng, Duduza, just waiting for me to come along and hold up. Do you have a lady outside? Inside. They got her too. You know, some people reject whites in the struggle. But here you are, with your woman, suffering along with the rest of us. You know something? You sacrificed more. It's easy for us. We've got nothing to lose. Except your chains, as they say. Yeah. Only that I traded my chains for a rope. I bombed a police station, killed three bullet pigs. Oh, yeah, they're gonna hang me, man. That's it. And they'll be laughing while they're doing it. But you, all they want you to do is to cooperate, and they'll let you go. Listen, bro, we won't blame you. You live to fight another day. I had no choice, but you do. Hey. You didn't kill any cops, did you? You didn't kill anyone, Mati, did you? Did you? No. No one. What did you do?
I agreed to hide some weapons. Try them! Shut up! He's an informer! Informer? Ha! Huh. What do you know? I think you are the informer! Bullshit! You tell a white man you blew up a police station? No way! You think he was the informer? It's, it's not true! Don't listen to him! Or to him? Or to anyone else? Just keep your fucking mouth shut! I think you are the informer! Don't listen to him! Thank you for coming, Mr. Kruger. You, um, the chief interrogator. Senior investigative officer. Of the uh, secret police. The security branch. It wasn't secret. We had nothing to hide. Between 1979 and uh, uh, 19... 1988. 1988. Yeah. Yes, now retired. So, why have you asked me to drop by? I'm investigating incidents of brutality and torture during that time. Now, these are vital issues, my friend. We finally achieved the new democratic South African people are always saying, you know, why rake up the past? But a black mob would chase a black guy down the street and cut him to pieces with a machete in front of his wife and kids and piss in his mouth when he begged for mercy and necklace him with a tire with burning petrol. And what was his crime? Huh? That he bought some beans at a white store to feed his wife and family. That's your brutality, that's your torture. You took advantage of tribal warfare, you armed us both, you pitted us one against another, so that you, the white minority, oh, keep your you power. people have been doing that sort of thing to one another for centuries. All we added was the tires. We were just trying to keep you apart, man. Not just from white people, but from, your, from yourselves. I'm listening. Yes. You have nothing to hide. You don't like being recorded. Look, I don't mean you, man. You're an intelligent, educated man. Apartheid wasn't about skin color. It was about culture and civilized values. The 20th century cannot coexist with the Stone Age. It just won't work, my friend. We have had... Uh... Numerous statements from prisoners who were beaten and tortured. Me? Not by me. They were tortured under your orders. Orders? My orders? What orders? Have you such orders on file? There were daily beatings in a room next to your office. The cries of pain that could be heard by everyone on the floor. Sorry? Uh, the cries of pain. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm deaf in one ear. From childhood, you know. But if what you say is correct, that prisoners were beaten, then I'm shocked. I would have stopped it immediately, but I heard nothing. Peter Martin Stradle. Stradum, stradum, stradum. Ah, yes, 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 yes. The professor. <laughs> yeah, tortured, no, no, I know about him. He wanted to be tortured. He wanted to be a martyr, you know, like his black brothers with the scars to, to show for it. Eh? And he was very, very upset when I wouldn't oblige him. 
Where are the surveillance photos of Strader men in Zimbabwe? They're not in the file. What photos? Exactly. There are none. Your agents were not following him in Zimbabwe, were they? My agents were AWOL, man. They were surveilling the fucking concert. Yeah, I mean, it's not every day that Bruce Springfield plays live in the arsehole of the world, eh? So, he did not blow his friends at 26 Somerset Road. <laughs> man, we'd known about Somerset Road for months. No, he, he was a guilty liberal. Guilt weakens you. That was no problem with the blacks. They acted from ideals. That made them stronger? Ah, now you can't generalize. Some of them would snap like twigs. Huh? And others were so tough, you could hit them with everything and they'd... Hit them with everything? I hit them with every question I could think of, and they didn't break. You hit them with questions? No, precisely. As defined in Section 11 of the Geneva Convention. Prisoner has contusions of the abdomen and the lower back. That was caused by questions. So I can't read the rest of it. Tells you I got them, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. It says prisoner fell down the stairs, like 40 or 50, 100 others. So, call the building inspector. The stairs were unsafe. You never charged to straight them. Why not? Well, it was 10 years ago. No, there was not go to court. He wasn't some nameless kaffir. He was a professor, an Afrikaner. He would have the white regime and you personally uh, on trial. He would have man, CNN outside the court, outside your house. He was much said. too smart for oh, you. Oh, come on, he's a fucking idiot. Oh, did he give road scholarships to fucking idiots? I told you it came with his birth certificate. And what came with your birth certificate? Your father owned nothing. He never went to high school, much less Oxford. He was a poor white who hated blacks because he feared us. And you give a calf half a chance. That's what apartheid is all about, to protect the fucking white idiots. <laughs> yeah, he came home drunk every night and beat his wife. How often did you see him beat your mother? Did you try to stop him, huh? I've had another place. I could you do, you were just a kid. That's Give me how you lost your hearing. It wasn't by accident. He hit you so hard, you ruptured your ears. This is nonsense. How many times did he beat you? Is that why you thought it was normal to beat prisoners? But you went. You studied. Became a colonel. Despite your white trash roots. Peter Martin straight and had it all on a silver platter. No wonder you hated his guts. I don't have... I don't have to stay here and listen to all this kaffir psychology crap, eh? Thank you. <laughs> you must be fucked in the head, you know. Every day I read the reports, and every night you're in some kind of a disturbance, and every night they gas you. I got a whiff of that stuff once when the wind changed, and I'm telling you, it's not for me. So are you ever gonna fucking learn, or you just wanna get gassed or what? They just like gassing. Ah uh, well, you put your hand over the fucking hole and you bounce it back in their faces, man. Push! Oh, you fucking back, man. Yeah, sorry. But it's so fucking simple, and you never even thought of it. Shit straight on. You're never gonna make it inside. Satisfied, you bastard! Take down shopping center right next to the railway station at fucking rush hour. 
Could have been my wife, your mother, anybody. So what's next, eh? Hey! Got a bomb in the loading zone! Blow up a suitcase in a school bus! Kill a hundred secretaries on their way to work! Where's the grid? Grid? There was a grid on the window! Where is it? Who cares about that fucking grid? They're probably reading. One of your famous suicides? It's like I fell down the stairs trying to escape! Blackson! Stay with a fucking brick, man! Amnesty knows all about your suicides. Sergeant. Playback. You didn't kill anyone, Monty, did you? Did you? No. No one. What did you do? I agreed to hide some weapons. But all I said is I agreed. Doesn't you admit say... you agreed. You confessed to conspiracy. You are guilty of treason, sabotage, and terrorism. And now, nine murders in a Cape Town shopping center. Hey, Sergeant. Who's A rope will be tied around your neck. Lead weights will be tied to your ankles. You stand on a trap door, and when it opens, your neck will break. You'll die quickly, if you're lucky. Tell me about Umswaki. Umswaki Ntuli. Who gave you the AK-47s, the grenades and the limpet mines we found in your house. I see it rings a bell. I already know Umswaki. And very soon, I will have Umswaki. Your silence will cost me a day, perhaps only an hour. It'll cost you your life. Oh, come on, man. Don't sacrifice yourself for a kaffir, eh? Who'd sell you for a cigarette? When did you first meet Mswaki? You met him at Victor Bukwana's house in Guguletu on June the 9th. That seems like his wife. Bukwana, your prize pupil. How do you think we wrapped you up? He sang like a canary. He told us everything about you. But he had the sense to take a year instead of execution. Where was your next meeting? We won't find him there. He never stays anywhere for longer than a day. That is Shabin. Good. Which Shabin? Oh, come on, man. We can't make a case out of a Shabin. It's a proper bar or someone's living room. Label booze or home brew? Label. Johnny Walker. Electric light or gas lift? Electric. Anything else, man? Little details. It was a banging next door. Banging? Banging? Someone banging someone's wife? Banging? Hammering? Hammering wood? What kind of banging? Hammering metal. See, I would lay in 99. The neighbor does bodywork on smashed up cars. You see, corporation is painless. You help us, help yourself. And you don't hurt anyone. Kirsty wanted you to have this. Under the Security Act, you have no right to mail. I told you you'd never receive it, but she wrote anyway. What did you discuss there with them, Zwaki? That was when you agreed to hide the weapons, wasn't it? Where was your next meeting? There wasn't any. I only met with him twice. Is that all you're going to tell me? Do you think you're going to buy your leniency with that? I don't know anything more. My God, you've already arrested everyone I knew except him, and I barely knew him. You're so fucking pathetic. He knew that. 
He knew you'd be caught. He knew you'd betray him. So he gave you nothing to betray, huh? But he knew all about you because you spilt your stupid guts to him about how much you hated apartheid, how guilty you felt. You poured your sick little heart and you never even noticed. He told you nothing in return. Get him out of here. Wait. Oh, forget it. You're finished. I know. I know where his wife lives. Sell Q. Sell Q. Are you there? I'm here. Are you okay? They really fucked you up. <laughs> What's that old joke? It only hurts when I laugh. How did you know he was an informer? He wasn't shooting the breeze with you, man. He was questioning you. He's a blackjack. He's on the payroll. The cop. Did you see him? Yeah. They just let him out and he walked away. Listen, if you see him again on the outside, grab him, man. Hold him for the people. Do you ever worry that you can't take it anymore? Oh, Jesus. After that last beating, I don't know. Tomorrow, the day after, a week, a month. Shut up! Don't tell them anymore. They're taping us.
In my confession, I begged your forgiveness. I cried to think I was betraying you. But those tears clarified my eyes, and now I see you betrayed me. I'm glad we were caught. I'd rather be in prison than know your bombs killed innocent people. So I don't care if you forgive me, because I'll never forgive you. I now know what you are. A piece of shit I stepped in on the path of life. And I'll spend the rest of my life scraping you off my soul. your shit off my soul. What happened? They smashed the door down. I was asleep. They dragged me naked out of bed. They wouldn't let me put anything on. They were all staring at me, saying disgusting things and laughing. Then they tore the house apart. Searched my desk. The drawers. And they searched me. They bent me over. And one of them rammed his fingers so deep into me that I bled. They were laughing. And one of them said, she may have contraband way in there. Use something longer like your dick. And he said, ach, near. The commie bitch will give me some disease. Excerpts from her forthcoming novel. It's from a sworn deposition. I wasn't there. I knew nothing. But you knew this was fake. Printed at your order. There was no bomb in Cape Town. No mutilated victims. Good, that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, 
I now know what you are. A piece of shit, I stepped in. Who wrote this? You wrote this. Forging a handwriting, that was easy enough, but uh, the personal details, the feelings, even Stratham believed it. And he knew her better than anyone. You confiscated their papers, their letters, their love notes, their diaries. You've invaded their very intimacy. She did not betray Stratham. You used her own words to torture him. Torture? Yeah, what was pieces of paper? <laughs> oh, come on, man. You can't be a sissy in this world. There are so many enemies out there. Why spend so much time on Stratum? He's no threat to the regime. He even faked his betrayal of Mzwaki. Mm what? Not what? Who? Mzwaki. Mzwaki Ndouli. An ANC agent underground in Cape Town. Rings no bells. Long time ago. Ah, it says here. Stradium betrayed Mzwaki to you and then sank into a deep depression. Ah, oh, shame. Give him a Prozac. But you could not have betrayed Mzawaki. You arrested Mzawaki five days before Stratum. You already had him, interrogated him, tortured him. Jesus, he But he gave you nothing, no matter what you did to him. So you used Mzawaki to torture Stratum, and you beat Mzawaki to death just to teach him who's the boss. I never beat anyone. I'm not a violent man. The wacky was dragged in. And then he was raised up where he could see straight. And then he pulled his wacky head back. And they smashed it against the door. And he pulled his head back. And they smashed it against the door. And then he fell down. And they got some steel bars. And they hit him. Hit him! Let him! And... and then scooped out his eyeballs and ate them. With or without mustard, I can't recall. You're this is a sick fantasy to cover your own atrocities. I was in this cell. I saw it. Nelson Mandela, address, prison. Sergeant Moolman.
pathetic. Your girlfriend's more of a man than you are. There's some clothes in the toiletries. Try and clean yourself up. You're formally charged with four offences under four statutes, each of which carries the death penalty. Your lawyer better be as good as you think he is. I can see him now. Right. He can't see me like this, can he? What does my file say? Did I fall down the stairs again? You instigated a riot. You assaulted a police officer. And you were subdued with moderate force. A man takes responsibility for his actions, straight on. Your father should have taught you that. So don't blame me. Huh? You assaulted me, so don't blame me. You betrayed him, Swaki. You're to blame for being a gutless coward. And you're to blame that your father's disowned you. He tore up your stupid letter, man. If you had any decency, you'd plead guilty and spare him the public shame of a trial, especially with his heart condition. He didn't answer your letter, man. When you asked me about it later, I called him. He said, he said there were 26 peace stratums in the book. I had the wrong number. I didn't get it from the book. I got it from your Philofax. And the address was the same as on your letter to him. I told him that, Marty. He said I was mistaken. He said his son had died years ago and that if we had a Peter Stradom in custody, it was no relation. Then he hung up. Look, I'll call him again, eh, Marty? Hey? Eh? Hey? Eh? I'll do what I can. Hey? Eh? his only son. Stradam! Stradam! Marty, are you okay? Answer me, Marty! Answer me, Mate. Are you okay? <laughs> Jesus, Mate, please. Are you okay? What did he say? I'm being charged. Good. Now you can uh, have a lawyer. Your family will help you. Family? My father said... He said that I'm dead. Well, count your blessings, man. I never even knew my own father. <laughs> he died in mine. Thousands of miles from home, and my mother! She died of despair. 
my brothers and sisters still in the homelands watching their children die of malnutrition. Well, I count my blessings. Shit, man, you joined the struggle. Be proud. My friends all testified against me, even my woman. Then they were not your friends. And fuck her. She's not worth your love. Shut up. Shut up! Hey! Who is the brother who screamed in the night and Marty called out to him? Brother! Are you still here? It was me. Ah! What did he say? here, Marty. And nobody gives a damn. But Marty, you can tell the world. You can help us all, boy. Come on. He gave me clothes for the lawyer. Ah, put them on, man. Dress like a free man. You should see these ties. Ah, Marty, do you still have pencil and paper? Paper and pencil. Uh, yeah. Good. Write this down. You are going on trial for all of us. This country is on trial. Not us. You tell our story. They threw us off our farms. They smashed my house. They killed our cattle. They hit my grandmother with a car. They beat my father to death when he didn't say so. Fucking sir. You tell the story. They shot my father. Yes. They shot my sister in the back. Only 11 years old. Marty, you and I promised to call your father. Well, he hung up on me again. So, um, I decided to go along to the house. I thought maybe if we were able to talk face to face. The police were already there. And an ambulance. They were wheeling him out, Marty. I'm sure they did everything possible. But it was his heart. You know, he, he just didn't make it.
may want to make your peace with him. But at least he's at peace. I'm very sorry. Marty, what did he want? What's wrong, goddammit? Told him what? I thought there was time. God. Now is the time, Marty. Oh, it's too late. He's gone. No, no, no. He's not gone. No one has ever gone. Listen to me, Marty. We know these things. We live and we breathe in the presence of our ancestors. Everybody who ever lived is still here with us. Your father is not gone. He's here. The first place he came was here to find you. <sighs> Listen to me. We know these things. He feels just as you do. He wishes he had told you, and he's here. But he can no longer speak, <gasps> but he can hear. So you must. Tell him, Marty, because he needs you. He's scared. So reach out to him. We know how to do this. We call to him. He turns and listens. We sacrifice a bull to him. He hears the bull cry. He knows it's for him, and he comes, crying tears of joy that rains in the fields. And new life arises. Your life, Marty. Your sons and daughters. His grandchildren, through whom he lives on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come Come on! Come on! Come Blood. 
fences the earth. He hears the call. We have answered his blood with our blood. And he's here, Marty. Talk to him. He's looking for you. Paul. Louder. Talk to him, Marty. He is with you. He needs you. Call to him. Tell him what's in your heart. Mate! What are you doing, Mate?
the logbook in the lobby of this building, the security desk. June 27th, one day after the arrest. PM Stradham Senior, 8.30 a.m., when the door opened, entry denied, and in parentheses, the initials HK. And again at 3 p.m., entry denied, HK. The next day, the same, the uh, 29th, PM Stradham Senior, twice, entry denied, HK. And the same, July 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and fourth, you told him his father disowned him, yet he was here every day, twice a day, and every time, entry denied, H.K., Hendrik Kruger, you. You told him that his father tore up this letter, that you never sent it. It's still here in the file. Ten years later, along with letters from his father to the Minister of Police, to the Minister of Justice, to State President Mr. P. W. Botta. Now, all these letters were referred down the chain of command. Refer to the case officer, refer to the officer in charge, refer to H.K. Now you saw all of these, and you also saw this letter written from father to son. Dear Marty, we love you dearly. How deeply I regretted the long silence between us. I blame myself so much. Now you saw this, but Marty did not. He believed you that his father had abandoned him. He believed you that he had died of a heart attack caused by the stress that he had caused him. But he didn't die of a heart attack. In fact, two days after Marty's death, he spoke to the press. All my life, I've been a loyal Afrikaner. I believe the apartheid was best for all South Africans, black and white. When my son told me I was wrong, I did not listen. I urge everyone in this tortured country to stop and examine your hearts. Not because my son is dead. Thousands of our sons are dead, black and white. And thousands more will die unless we stop and examine our hearts. So what have you got with all this? Huh? Straight on pulled his own plug, man. All I did was not plug it back in again. Hendrik Kruger, I charge you with the murder of Peter Morton Strader. Murder? You'll never make it stick. You know, you really ought to get a white man to handle these things for you. Now bring me a lawyer. Can you believe it? They tell me they're in tar case. <laughs> they don't have one. Okay. Can you have a sock? Oh. Yeah, can you sock? They don't have any evidence. Yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yes, the whole thing's a joke, man. A joke. <laughs> Oh, 
I am Peter Martin Strydom. I... I just wanted to see what kind of... What kind of man? Thank <laughs> you. 